Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back learners the video is for the subject of geography for the course of bachelor's in arts with geography or bachelor's in arts with honors in geography the video is for the paper of climatology module 2 solar radiation heat balance and temperature today we will be starting with lecture 4 of module 2 which is heating and cooling of the atmosphere and factors affecting distribution of temperature on earth the video is being recorded by dr pallavi upreti the course coordinator and presenter for the video is dr pallavi upreti affiliated to department of geography dune university the academic expert and reviewer for the video is professor santosh verma head of the department department of geography sdm pg government degree college doiwala dehradun affiliated to shri dev suman uttarakhand university the video is produced and presented under the project name dth swayam prabha channels of mhrd new delhi india Hello learners I am Dr Pallavi Upreti assistant professor in the department of geography in Dr Nityanand Himalayan Research and Study Center Dune University Dehradun We have already covered three lectures in module 2 and in this particular fourth lecture we will be covering the heating and cooling of our earth and what are the factors which are related to temperature distribution on earth so let's begin The main learning objective of this particular lecture is to understand earth's atmospheric temperature heating and cooling of the atmosphere which mainly happens through three processes through direct radiation conduction and convection and finally to understand the factors which affect or control the distribution of temperature on earth earth's atmospheric temperature to understand what earth's atmospheric temperature is we must understand first what is temperature temperature is the measure of hotness or coldness expressed commonly in scales like fahrenheit and celsius the temperature generally means the atmospheric temperature and the average temperature of earth currently is approximately 15 degrees celsius why we are saying currently because the earth's temperature has fluctuated over its geological history where we know that at one point of time the earth was very very hot it was a hot rotating ball of gases and then during the entire process of degassing of earth's interior also the earth was very very hot and then there were tremendous volcanic eruptions on the surface of earth so there was a hot phase of earth and then the earth gradually began to cool down and followed by numerous ice ages in between the current temperature has settled today to about 15 degrees celsius and this temperature of earth is actually maintained by the two basic sources first is the direct insulation and second is from the outgoing terrestrial radiation so these are the two processes which actually provide energy to the atmosphere where a significant component is received through incoming solar radiation and a very effective significant component is also received through outgoing long wave terrestrial radiation the earth constantly strive to maintain the heat balance between the incoming solar radiation and outgoing terrestrial radiation which is also called as the heat budget of earth and when earth does that the constant heating and cooling of atmosphere allows transfer of heat so the transfer of heat generally takes place in three ways first the radiation when the earth atmosphere is heated by direct radiation from sun so when the earth atmosphere is heated by the incoming solar radiation and absorbs a proportion of incoming solar radiation which is somewhere around 14% which in turn heats up the 
atmosphere in the process. So this is called as radiation. Secondly, besides radiation, the other two processes which heats up the atmosphere are conduction and convection. But these two processes are mainly associated with the outgoing terrestrial radiation of the Earth's surface. So in this conduction, what happens that it takes place when two bodies of unequal temperature are in contact with one another and there is a flow of energy from warmer to cooler surface until the temperature of both becomes equal. So in this process, as you can also see in the diagram that the stove surface is hot and when the pan comes in contact, in direct contact with the stove, so the transfer of heat takes place through direct contact and in the process, the bottom of the pan is heated in this process. So this type of heating is called as conduction. Through the similar process, the air just above the ground surface is also heated, which is in direct contact with the ground surface. So when the earth absorbs a specific amount of radiation, it reflects back to the space. And in that process, the atmospheric layers which are in direct contact with the ground surface are heated due to the process of conduction from below. Another process in continuation to conduction is convection through which the atmosphere is heated and convection is the transfer of heat energy through the movement of a mass of substance from one place to another and in this process of convection it is only effective in fluids and gases because their internal mass motion activates convection of heat energy. So when the surface is heated, the first transfer of heat takes place to conduction. But when the warm air in contact with the ground becomes heated, it rises vertically on heating in the form of currents and further transmits the heat to the atmosphere. So this process of vertical heating of atmosphere is called as convection. But both these processes, conduction and convection, are confined to the lower layers of the atmosphere only because the air is a poor conductor of heat. So it can only transfer heat to certain kilometers in the lower layers of the atmosphere, primarily in the troposphere. So here in the diagram also you can see that initially the pot is heated through the process of conduction but later on when this lower portion of the pot gets heated through conduction the warm liquid rises up and it heats up the upper layers of this particular liquid through the process of convection. Similar processes also happens in the atmosphere also. As you can see in this diagram also the three ways uh, how the energy is transferred is first through radiation where incoming solar radiation heats up the atmosphere in the process because it's absorbed nearly 14% of incoming solar radiation and then when it hits the ground the re-emitted radiations from the ground surface which are also called as the long wave terrestrial radiation it heats up the atmosphere first the lower layers of the atmosphere are heated through the process of conduction which are very much near to the ground surface and are in direct contact with the ground surface so there is a direct transfer of heat and when these particular lower layers of atmosphere or air in the lower layers this is heated up it rises it becomes light it becomes warm and it rises up and in this process the transfer of heat takes place through the process of convection and in the process the upper layers of the uh, atmosphere they are also heated up but both the processes are confined to the troposphere only, to the lower layer of the atmosphere only. So these were the three ways in which the heating of the atmosphere takes place through radiation, through conduction and through convection. Earth after being heated by insulation radiates 
the heat back to the space in the form of long wave radiations and in the process it transmits significant amount of heat to the lower layers of the atmosphere particularly troposphere and heats up the atmosphere from below this process is called as terrestrial radiation or outgoing terrestrial radiation it is also called as effective radiation why because our atmosphere is primarily heated through this process it is through this process only that the earth is primarily able to maintain its temperature therefore our atmosphere is primarily heated from outgoing long wave terrestrial radiations wherein the atmospheric layer just above the ground surface are heated first through conduction and then the heat is transferred to upper layers through the process of convection the presence of greenhouse gases like co2 water vapor in the atmosphere traps the heat radiated by the earth thus warming the planet and therefore these are called as greenhouse gases because they have the ability to trap the heat thus the atmosphere is transparent to most of the incoming solar radiations it still absorbs some amount of solar radiation specifically in the stratosphere where there is a presence of ozone and it absorbs the uv radiation so barring uv radiation it is transparent to most of the incoming solar radiations while absorbs major proportion of long wave terrestrial radiation emitted by the surface of earth therefore this process is called as greenhouse effect and it is also called as effective radiation it absorbs the heat first and then gradually releases the heat to space thus maintaining the constant temperature on earth and maintaining the heat budget of our planet the greenhouse effect is also evident through these diagrams wherein you can see that the atmosphere is mostly transparent to incoming short wave solar radiations whereas it is opaque to the outgoing long wave terrestrial radiations and the terrestrial radiations are trapped in the atmosphere for a very long time period and then the atmosphere gradually releases the heat to the outer space so how these long wave terrestrial radiations are trapped mainly because of the presence of greenhouse gases gases which are co2 water vapor methane in the troposphere in the lower regions of the atmosphere primarily in the troposphere so when these long wave terrestrial radiations from the earth surface try to escape to outer space the atmosphere traps them because of the presence of these molecules co2 h2o molecules in the atmosphere and presence of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is actually responsible for maintaining the warm temperatures on earth and this is the greenhouse effect wherein our atmosphere is transparent to incoming solar radiations whereas it traps the outgoing terrestrial radiations thus maintaining the effective temperatures optimum temperatures on the surface of earth distribution of temperature on earth the distribution of temperature on earth is primarily studied in two ways first based on time period or time scale time based distribution of temperature which is also called as temporal distribution of temperature wherein we try to study how throughout the geological time scale the earth's temperature has fluctuated so through time dimension we want to study the uh, distribution of temperature second one is based on space which is called as spatial distribution of temperature and it can be both vertical as well as horizontal while vertical space defines the temperature distribution altitudinally or along the layer across the layers of the atmosphere vertical distribution of temperature the horizontal distribution of temperature explains the temperature distribution along the 
latitudes on the surface of earth so besides vertical transfer of heat the heat on the earth is also redistributed along the latitudes through the horizontal movement of air which is also called as advection the horizontal movement of air is relatively more important than the vertical movement since it defines the spatial temperature conditions wind system pressure systems across the globe and they are also responsible for numerous weather patterns weather phenomena distinction in climate across the globe factors affecting spatial distribution of temperature the spatial distribution of temperature is affected by several factors like latitude altitude nature of land and water distance from coast nature of ground surface nature of ground slope prevailing winds and ocean currents all these factors existing on earth develop conditions which affect and control the spatial distribution of temperature now we will be discussing all these factors one by one and we will try to understand how each factor affect the spatial distribution of temperature the first factor is latitude as we all know that the temperature on the ground surface depends on the amount of insulation received at that place and in the lower latitudes the temperature is high because of more insulation is received in the lower latitudes because of the spherical shape of the earth the areas which are located on equator received direct insulation therefore they are warmer and as we move from the equatorial areas towards the poles because the angle of sun rays becomes oblique the amount of insulation received is also less therefore in the higher latitudes the amount of insulation received is less because of the sun rays are oblique as we move towards the poles pertaining to low insulation and low temperature whole year round although this is true that equatorial regions received direct insulation it despite of receiving maximum insulation but they seldom record high temperatures maximum temperatures this is mainly due to very high rate of evaporation and always these areas are covered with very heavy clouds which reflect a substantial amount of insulation and obstruct the insulation reaching the surface of earth therefore despite the equatorial regions receives maximum uh, insulation the maximum temperatures are not recorded on equatorial regions rather the maximum temperatures are recorded a little further north to the equatorial regions along the 20 degree north of equator so these areas are a uh, very hot and they record high temperatures so latitude you can see has a very significant influence in distribution of temperature where lower latitudes have higher temperature and higher latitudes have lower temperature and gradually as we move from equatorial regions towards the polar regions the temperature decreases with increasing latitude so here you can see that how the angle of incidence of sun differ latitudinally over the equator the sunlight hits the earth directly that is it hits at around 90 degree angle therefore the sunlight is concentrated over a smaller area all year long and most light is absorbed therefore the equatorial regions are warmer so here in this diagram you can see that secondly in the mid latitudes the sunlight hits the earth at a slightly oblique angle okay so you can see that at 45 degree angle it is hitting the surface of earth because of the curved nature of the earth surface okay so here in the mid latitudes the amount of incoming sunlight reduces as compared to the equator and therefore the temperatures fluctuate seasonally because of the apparent movement of the sun whole year round where the sun is 
directly overhead the tropic of cancer during the summer season and tropic of capricorn in the southern hemisphere during the winter season so this seasonal fluctuation of or the apparent movement of the sun affect the distribution of temperature in the mid latitudes third in the polar regions you can see that the sun rays are more oblique therefore this sunlight hits the earth at a very very low angle and therefore receives very less energy which leads to 3 months of darkness during the winters and 3 months of light during the summer season making the region much more colder so the latitudes you can see that has a very significant influence on the distribution of temperature specifically horizontal distribution of temperature is greatly influenced by the latitudinal dimension or latitudinal location of any place the second important factor besides latitude is altitude as we know that the earth's atmosphere is heated primarily through outgoing terrestrial radiation therefore the air which is just near the surface of earth is much more warmer as compared to the air which lie above that or as we move up in the atmosphere so because of the effective radiation or heating of earth's atmosphere from below the temperature of any air parcel or temperature of air decreases with increasing height from the earth surface at an average rate of 6.5 degrees celsius per kilometer which is also called as normal lapse rate so as we move up in the atmosphere the temperature constantly decreases the atmosphere is primarily heated through terrestrial radiation therefore the layers just above the ground or the lower most layer of the atmosphere are warmer as compared to the upper layers of the atmosphere and then once these layers are heated up the heat is gradually transferred to the upper layers of the atmosphere therefore the lower portion of the atmosphere is warmer as compared to the upper portion of the atmosphere because of this existence of normal lapse rate however this normal lapse rate is only prevalent in the troposphere in the lower layers of the atmosphere specifically troposphere so as we move up in the troposphere the lower layers of the troposphere are warmer because of their direct contact with the ground and as we move up in the troposphere the temperature decreases at the rate of 6.5 degree celsius per kilometer as you can also see in this diagram that the temperature at sea level is 30 degree celsius and as we move up in the troposphere at every 1000 meter as we move up every 1000 meter or 1 kilometer it drops at the rate of 6.5 degree celsius per 1000 meter and becomes 23 degree 0.5 degree celsius at 1000 meter further moving 1000 meter up it again reduces at the normal lapse rate and becomes 17 degree celsius and keeps on reducing till tropo pause and beyond tropo pause all the mixing stops so the decrease of temperature with increasing height is only prevalent in the troposphere the decrease of temperature with increasing height is more over the equatorial areas why because the height of the tropopause is more is somewhere around 12 to 14 kilometers over the equatorial areas and over the polar areas it is just 7 to 10 kilometers so over the polar areas the decrease of temperature with increasing height is comparatively less as compared to the equatorial areas because of the vertical extent the vertical extent of air over the equatorial areas is more as compared to the polar areas so the impact of altitude is quite profound in the distribution of temperature on earth moving on to the next factor nature of land and water 
the contrasting nature of land and water surface in relation to the incoming short wave solar radiation largely affect the spatial and temporal distribution of temperature. So it basically defines how much amount of insulation is absorbed and reflected from the surface of land and water. Since land because of its properties becomes warm quickly and also quickly becomes cold then water even after receiving equal amount of insulation the temperature of land increases more than water due to their contrasting nature so the solar radiation penetrates to shallow depths on land and has to heat small portions of land therefore the temperature on land quickly becomes high the land evaporates also less as compared to water and the specific heat of land is also less which leads to higher temperatures on land as compared to water. So when we see properties of water the solar radiation penetrates to greater depths and has to heat a large volume of water therefore the water takes more time to heat and gradually heats up and the temperature of waters remains low as compared to land and definitely there is more evaporation which also mellows down the temperature effect and then the specific heat of water is also more as compared to land because of these contrasting properties the amount of insulation received absorbed reflected on both the surface is different where on one hand the land quickly warms up and quickly becomes cold. The water takes more time to heat as well as more time to cool down. Because of this contrasting nature of land and water, the distribution in the northern and southern hemisphere is also affected by the nature of land and water because you have more land in the northern hemisphere as compared to the southern hemisphere so the northern hemisphere get more heated as compared to the southern hemisphere also on land there is less mixing of the heat as compared to water the water the mixing of heat can easily takes place which keeps the temperature low as compared to the land so the contrasting nature of land and water definitely affect the distribution of temperature on earth Fourth factor which affect the distribution of temperature on earth is distance from coast. The marine environment moderates the temperature conditions of the coastal areas because of more mixing of air due to rhythmic flow of land and sea breeze. The daily range of temperature therefore near the coastal areas is moderate but increases on moving away from the coast. So, the climate in the continental areas is characterized by extremely high daily range of temperature where there is a very high daytime temperature and very low nighttime temperature because of the capability of land to get hot very quickly and also to lose the heat very quickly therefore the extremely high daily range of temperature is found in the continental interiors as compared to the coastal areas where the daily range of temperature is low therefore minimum daily range of temperature is characteristic features of the coastal climate because there is a continuous movement of land and sea breeze in the coastal areas moderating the temperature conditions in the coastal areas as compared to the continental interiors therefore the distance from the coast also affect the temperature in any region the fifth factor is nature of ground surface different types of surfaces because of their very texture color material coarseness or smoothness etc may reflect the radiation in different ways this reflection is called as albedo so the reflectance capacity of any object any surface is called as albedo the higher the albedo means the more the reflectance of any surface the lower the albedo means the lesser the reflectance of any surface the albedo from different surface maintains the earth's average temperature so as we know that white surfaces tend to reflect more the 
polar ice caps tend to reflect more because they are of white surfaces. Therefore, the albedo of white regions, shiny regions, white regions and snow covered areas is more as compared to the albedo of darker regions or dense forest areas or concrete. It is less. So you can see in the diagram also the albedo of fresh snow is 80 to 95 percent whereas the albedo of this bitumen road is 5 to 10 percent. The albedo of grass is 25 to 30 percent. The albedo of water body is 10 to 60 percent depending upon its density, its salinity and depending upon its depth also. So, so many factors are responsible in defining the albedo of any surface and albedo of numerous surfaces defines the average albedo of earth. So, when the planet has more albedo, it reflects more thus it cool downs much faster whereas if the planet's albedo is less it absorbs more and hence reflects less making the planet warmer therefore the fluctuations in the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere may fluctuate the planet's albedo because as we've already discussed the greenhouse gases have the ability to trap heat therefore when they are trapping heat they means they are absorbing more heat and reflecting less. So if greenhouse gases, the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere increases, they will definitely trap more heat and the albedo will become less, meaning the temperature of that region will definitely increase. Since snow covered regions reflect a significant amount of radiation back to the space, so global warming induce changes in the polar regions may impact the overall temperature of the earth. So on one hand our greenhouse gases concentration is increasing which is decreasing the albedo. On the other hand the surfaces which reflect more like the snow covered surfaces because of global warming are shrinking which is again leading to increase in the uh, temperatures of the earth. So the nature of ground surface definitely impact the distribution of temperature on earth. Besides the nature of ground surface, the nature of ground slope or slope aspects also have great influence on the distribution of temperature on earth. The ground surface facing the sun receives more insulation and record high temperature as compared to the leeward slopes which are away from the sunlight which are opposite to sunlight and therefore receives less insulation. So such slopes are southward facing slope in the northern hemisphere and northward facing slopes in the southern hemisphere receives more insulation and such slopes are called as edward slopes because these are sun facing slopes and the slopes which lie in the shadow zone where the sunlight is not able to penetrate directly or which are opposite to the sunlight are called as Eubank slopes. So in the northern hemisphere, the southward facing slopes are Edred slopes and northward facing slopes are Eubank slopes. Whereas in the southern hemisphere, the northward facing slopes are Edred slopes and southward facing slopes are Eubank slopes. Because of this feature, because of the abundance of sunshine along these slopes, the maximum concentration of settlements can be seen in the slopes which are address slopes, which are southward facing slopes in the northern hemisphere and northward facing slopes in the southern hemisphere because they are good for agriculture, settlements, heat, sunshine. So besides the nature of ground surface, the nature of ground slope is also very important for the distribution of temperature. As you can see in this picture also, it gives a very clear cut demarcation of Edred and Dubeck slopes. So the sun facing slopes are Edred slopes because you can say, see that the angle of incidence of sun's rays is directly facing these slopes because of which they are endowed with lush green vegetation. They are also very good for agriculture as compared to the slopes which are opposite to the sunshine. So these slopes are called as Eubank slopes. So they are basically cold in their nature and therefore they are not preferred for settlement. 
Besides all these factors, the existence or the circulation of prevailing winds also helps in the redistribution of heat and moderates the temperature of any region. These winds can be of global nature, can be of regional or local nature. The circulation of permanent winds or planetary winds which blow throughout the year over the globe helps bringing in the moderating effects to different regions. For example, the winds blowing out from the equatorial regions towards the polar regions are warmer. Therefore, when they reach the polar regions, they increases the temperature of these regions, thus bringing the moderating effect to the chilly climate or chilly conditions of the polar areas. Whereas the winds blowing from higher latitudes when they blow towards the lower latitudes they reduces the temperature of the lower latitudes thus bringing the moderating effect in the lower latitudes also besides permanent winds there are local winds also just like sea breeze and land breeze so these winds blow from ocean towards the land bringing marine effect and lower the daily range of temperature in the coastal regions therefore these winds of local nature also brings the moderating effect in the coastal areas by moderating the temperatures of the coastal areas and vice versa similarly the winds coming from higher parts of the mountains to the lower valley regions also reduces the temperature of lower valley regions thus bringing the moderating effect besides this you have local winds like lu which blows over the north indian region during the summers increasing the temperature of the northern plain regions also the winds which are associated with warm ocean currents raises the temperature of the coastal areas and along with the cold ocean currents the temperature of the coastal areas is reduced so you can see here that whether the prevailing winds are of global regional or local nature they definitely impact the distribution of temperature on earth besides the movement of planetary winds local or regional winds the distribution of temperature is also affected by presence of ocean and global ocean current movement also so the ocean influences the weather and climate by storing a large amount of radiation distributing heat and moisture around the globe and thus deriving the weather systems around the globe the currents are movement of ocean water in a continuous flow created largely by surface winds but also partly by the temperature and salinity gradients earth rotation and tides etc so it is a continuous and periodic movement of ocean water from one region to another which helps in the redistribution of temperature on earth major current systems typically flow clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counter clockwise in the southern hemisphere in circular pattern that often traces the coastline so they not only moderate the effect the temperature latitudinally but also bring the moderating effect also reduces the temperature of the coastal areas so ocean currents much like conveyor belts transporting warm waters and precipitations from the equatorial regions towards the poles and the cold water from the poles back to the tropics so it will be clear with the picture in the next slide so as you can see here that the warm ocean currents flowing from the tropical areas to the temperate areas raises the temperature in the affected areas so when the tropical warm ocean water reaches the temperate areas they increases the temperature of the temperate areas thus bringing the moderating effect to the very cold northern regions similarly when the cold ocean currents bring the cold water to the tropical areas it reduces the temperature of the ocean water there and bringing the moderating effect to the warm areas also so the ocean currents regulates the global climate helping to counteract the uneven distribution of radiation reaching the earth surface so prevailing winds 
and the movement of ocean waters are global dimension phenomena which continuously occur over the surface of earth over our globe and helps in the global redistribution of heat on the surface of earth so these were all the eight factors which affect the distribution of temperature on earth so coming to the summary in this particular lecture we have tried to understand what temperature is and what are the factors which has affected the spatial distribution of temperature on earth so temperature is the measure of hotness and coldness and earth's average temperature is approximately 15 degrees celsius the transfer of heat on earth or the processes through which the atmosphere is heated uh, is generally through three processes radiation by absorbing directly the incoming solar radiations of sun and secondly through conduction and convection which generally happens uh, while the earth is re-emitting the energy back in the form of long wave terrestrial radiation and the distribution of temperature on earth is primarily studied in two ways first time based a distribution of temperature how the earth temperature has fluctuated over the geological time scale and second is the spatial distribution of temperature which is both vertical across the layers of the atmosphere and horizontal across the latitudes so latitudinal distribution horizontal distribution or vertical distribution of temperature Finally, we have also covered what are the factors which affect the spatial distribution of temperature on Earth. And these factors are latitude, altitude, nature of land and water, distance from coast, nature of ground surface, nature of ground slope, prevailing winds and ocean currents. So all these factors culminate into conditions, develop certain conditions which affect, which govern and which control the spatial distribution of temperature on our planet. So I hope this video was informative. Thank you.